What's going on guys? Welcome back to Arrival Entertainment and today we are going to be talking about the next live action G.I. Joe film, Snake Eyes, a G.I. Joe origin. Snake Eyes stars Henry Golding and is an origin story of the classic G.I. Joe character. This loner known as Snake Eyes saves a man of this Japanese clan and once he does that the clan takes him in, they give him a home, they teach him ninja ways and he eventually becomes Snake Eyes, the character Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe. As simple as I can put it, there's obviously more to it. That's as spoiler free as I'm gonna make it. When it comes to the G.I. Joe franchise, I was never that big of a fan of it. I played with some of the toys when I was younger, but I never watched any of the animated shows and I never really delved deep into the franchise of G.I. Joe. I picked up the two live action movies on 4K because I wanted to see them back when they first came out, but then everyone told me don't bother with those movies, they're really bad. But now with Snake Eyes coming out, I wanted to check them out, and while I don't hate them like everyone else does, they're pretty forgettable movies, especially the first one. So I was hoping with this new movie Snake Eyes, we'd get something new, something different, something unique, something to breathe new life into the G.I. Joe live action film franchise. And I was excited because I like Henry Golding. I think he's a pretty good natural actor. In fact, Henry Golding, I think, is the best part of this movie. I thought he did pretty good as Snake Eyes. I liked him as a character. He was likable. He was pretty cool in the action. Unfortunately, the rest of the movie ranged from okay to pretty bad. I had seen some of the reviews before I saw the movie, but I was still hoping that someone who's not a big G.I. Joe fan, someone who's not nostalgic about it like me, would still find some enjoyment of the movie, but unfortunately, this is a pretty predictable movie. And what do I mean by predictable? Well, this story has been done to death. There have been so many origin movies that have done this exact story, the way this movie does it, so many different times. And while I was watching the movie, I was predicting things that would happen, and sure enough, they did happen. It was so familiar that the friend I saw it with mentioned that there's a very similar plot points to this year's Mortal Kombat movie. And looking back on it, he's right. There is so many things that Mortal Kombat did that this movie did as well. And I was so disappointed with that because while watching the trailer for this movie, I really thought that this movie was going to be something different and unique, something that goes against the normal stuff we see in big budget blockbuster stuff, and it just didn't do that. It's all familiar territory that we have seen dozens of times before. Like I said earlier, it borrows so much from this year's Mortal Kombat movie, and I even had flashbacks to Batman Begins, a much better ninja movie than this. Now granted, your normal movie going audience and hardcore G.I. Joe fans probably won't even care about that. The general audience just wants to be entertained for a couple hours, while G.I. Joe fans are going to be very happy to see their uh, popular character, Snake Eyes, done pretty well. Like I said, Henry Golding is really good as the character. However, I can see one thing getting annoying to some people, and that is the action in this movie. Now, action movies have gotten a lot better since the early 2000s. Filmmakers finally understand that we don't want to see the camera shaking while a cool action scene's going on, and we want to see these actors do some of these stunts, if at least most of their own stunts. And the action in this movie goes right back to shaky. I thought we moved past this. I was so upset and disappointed with the action in this movie. It is so shaky, especially in the beginning of the movie. It gets a little bit better by the time the ending comes around, but it's still very shaky and annoying. Again, I thought we moved past this. The John Wick movies, when those came out, basically said, hey, you can make good action without shaking the camera and giving your audience a damn headache. But no, I guess some filmmakers still feel the need to shake the camera, I guess, to make us feel like we're a part of the action. And maybe that works if you do it well enough, but filmmakers don't do it well enough anymore. Shaky Cam has only worked in one film franchise, in my opinion, and that is the Jason Bourne movies. And it's because in those movies, it feels like there was a certain flair to it, a certain style that actually got you excited and you can still easily tell that Matt Damon and these actors are doing their stunts and it honestly did feel like you were a part of the action with him. Once those movies came out, filmmakers just said, oh, that worked out, so all we gotta do is shake the camera around a million times and we can hide the fact that we're using stunt doubles and we're not doing convincing action. And I'm honestly really frustrated that this movie took that route with its action because it was very annoying. I wasn't buying what was going on, and another problem with the action is that nothing felt 
gritty. Nothing felt like it was at big stakes. It felt very safe, very clean, very sanitized. I was really hoping this movie would have been rated R, but it's PG-13, so we get PG-13 action with shaky cam. And that just doesn't work anymore. I'm sorry. I, the John Wick films and the Mad Max Fury Road movie, we've moved past all that. So the fact that this movie's going back to it, it honestly feels a bit dated. And another thing that kind of irritated me is that this movie, by the time it was over, I looked back on it and it really feels like a Marvel movie. It really feels like the whoever owns the G.I. Joe franchise, I think Hasbro or Paramount or something like that, they were trying to copy the Marvel success again. There's a mid credit scene, although it's not really a mid credit scene. It takes place like a couple seconds after the credits pop up. It, it was really weird. The film ends abruptly too. But the whole movie just kind of feels like it's another franchise copying off the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And that's fine, but you gotta have your own style to it. This movie doesn't have its own style. It feels like it's borrowing from a handful of different movies and it came across as dated and copying off so much. I, I don't know how better way to describe it but that. This movie really let me down. As someone who's not a G.I. Joe fan, I was really hoping this would be something cool, but it really wasn't. It's a little better than the first two G.I. Joe live action movies, but if you've seen those movies, you know that's not really saying much. I'm sure hardcore G.I. Joe fans are going to be very happy seeing Snake Eyes portrayed on the big screen very well by Henry Golding, but besides that, there's not really much else I can recommend here. This story has been done before in so many better ways. The action is beyond annoying, and I just, I just didn't care by the time this movie was over. Like, a lot of stuff just left my mind in this movie, which is disappointing. In fact, I was really looking forward to this, and this movie's a major disappointment. I can't really recommend this movie. I would only recommend it if you're a big, like, gigantic G.I. Joe fan, but even then, I know there's better stuff for you to check out, and I'm not even a hardcore G.I. Joe fan. So, yeah, I don't recommend this movie, it's not that good. I, it's not much else I can say. So guys, that's my review for Snake Eyes. As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions on the movie down in the comment section. And what are you hoping they do next time for another G.I. Joe movie? I'm just hoping for a better writer and director. Because <laughs> that's now three times in a row. The writing and directing just didn't work. So whatever your thoughts on everything is, let me know down in the comment section. And as always guys, thank you again so much for watching. Look forward to a review of Jungle Cruise and The Green Knight coming very soon. Again, thank you as always. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and share it. Subscribe right here if you haven't already. And until next time guys, take care.